A new React meta framework is upon us. Ladies and gents, Tanstack Start is in RC. This is already the most anticipated, the most loved, the most hyped about React meta framework, but it's not without reason. In today's video, I'm going to give you a crash course on everything Tanstack Start. We're gonna do an overview on Tanstack Start. We're gonna set up a Tanstack Start project. We're gonna talk about routing, server functions, environment functions, middleware, server routes. And I have no doubt after this video, you're going to get a good sense of Tanstack Start. So sit back back relax let's get started so we all love Tanstack for the amazing dev tools that they created in particular for myself Tanstack query in my opinion is the best state management utility library that exists in the react ecosystem but then they went ahead and built Tanstack router which is a type safe router for react and solid applications Tanstack start seems to be Tanstack router and all the missing features a meta framework built on react needs and here it tells you 90% of any framework usually comes down to the router. Tanstack Start is no different. Tanstack Start relies 100% on Tanstack Router for its routing system. In addition to Tanstack Router's amazing features, Tanstack Start enables even more powerful features like full document SSR, streaming, server routes and API routes, server functions, middleware, full stack bundling. You can deploy this thing anywhere and end to end type safety. By the way, when they say end to end type safety, they mean everything. Everything's type safe. Now there is one limitation that they document here and it's that they don't support react server components but depending on what you think about react server components this might be a good thing but they are actively working on it and it should be coming in the near future so let's set up a tan stack start project so I'm gonna copy this npx command and I'm just gonna paste this here and what's going to do is going to scaffold a basic tan stack start project okay I have my project running I'm going to do npm run dev and we're going to open localhost 3000 in a new tab and I see a basic sample project. Now, if you go to their docs, they have richer examples with integrations with different DB providers. I just wanted to start off basic so we can build on each topic I wanna to go over in this video. So we did a quick overview, we set up our project. Let's talk about routing. Now we know that Tanstack Start uses Tanstack Router as its router. And when we go to the Tanstack Router documentation, there are actually different ways of handling routing. Uh, my favorite one being file-based routing. I think I've used Next.js so much that file-based routing just makes more sense to me but there's a uh, virtual file routes where you define routes in code there's code based routing right where the name of the file dictates how uh, the route is I'm just going to stick to file based routing because it makes the most sense and if you're not familiar with file based routing if I wanted to have a slash post route I would essentially have a post folder and under the post folder i would have index.tsx instead of page.tsx in next.js we do page.tsx but in tanstack you would do index.tsx so this would take you to the slash post route the exact route but then if you did dollar sign post id.tsx what it's going to do is it's going to do slash post slash whatever id that you would then get from the url and maybe use that id to search your db and render whatever host that you have but here's another thing that you need to know if you just wanted to name a page about and you don't want to create a folder you can do about.tsx and that's the page post.tsx that's the page i think because i'm familiar and i've used next.js a lot i'm going to go with creating a folder then index.tsx maybe i'll just have the route be the file name but for now this is the convention i want to follow so here's what we're going to do i'm going to create a route in my tanstack start project we're going to go under routes you see there are already plenty of routes created for us but let's create a new one i'm going to create a new file we're going to create a dashboard folder by typing in dashboard and adding a slash if i hit enter it creates a folder and in here i'm just going to create index.tsx now I am about to hit enter. I want you to see what happens when I create this new file. Some code is generated for me. And you can see this is code that Tanstack Router generates for you. This is the code you need to register this as a router. So if I go to my localhost 3000 and I enter slash dashboard, I see hello slash dashboard and that's exactly the code that was generated. And again, if I wanted to create a nested layout, what I would do is I create a new file, dollar sign, I can do dashboard, id.tsx and you see slash dashboards slash dashboard id now you see i have slash dashboard slash 
dollar sign dashboard ID, but I hit one, two, three slash dashboard slash one, two, three. How do I extract the number? I'm going to go back to my dashboard ID file and autocomplete just took care of it. I'm going to do route dot use params, which is a hook that Tanstack start gives me and I can extract the dashboard ID and I can literally just swap or I'll just add this here. And then if I go back to the page, I can see if I even add some more numbers that I now have the ID from the route. So this is pretty much what you need in order to do routing in Tanstack Start. You can see here on the basic starter project, if I click on posts and I click on a specific post, uh, post renders. Now, if I look at the routing here, I see post.index.tsx and then I see post dollar sign post ID dot TSX. So this is again, another way you can do routing. But if I wanted to replicate this in a, and use file based routing, all I would do is create a posts uh, folder. And under the post folder, I'm just going to do index TSX. And then I'm just going to copy the post index TSX file. And I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to delete this file because I no longer need it. And then what I'm going to do is the post dot dollar sign post ID, I'm going to copy that. And under here, I'm going to do post actually dollar sign post ID dot TSX. And I'm going to paste the code here. So I'm going to make sure this gets imported properly. And I am going to delete this file. Now after deleting this and saving, if I go back to posts, you see it works just like it did earlier, right? So you can pick however you want to handle routing. I like using file based routing. So now that we've done routing, let's talk server functions. Server functions let you define server only logic that can be called from anywhere in your application, loaders, components, hooks, or other server functions. They run on the server, but can be invoked from client code seamlessly. So another mental model for you to think of is almost like server actions, but unlike server actions with server functions in Tanstack start, you can do get requests. You can use them to fetch data. And this is how you invoke a server function. You call create server function from Tanstack start, and then you call the handler. And then in the handler, you write whatever async function, async code, and then you can call that anywhere in a component, in a loader, in a hook. We have a simple example here where under the utils folder, we have a file called post.tsx. And in the post.tsx, we have this fetch posts server function, right? And then in the handler, all we have is us fetching posts from this random API. If the request fails, then we throw an error. If it doesn't, we extract the post and we return the post. We return 10 posts. And here's the thing now I can call this fetch post pretty much anywhere. So I can go in my post route and you can see in the route configuration, I have what's called a loader. If you've ever used uh, react router V seven or remix version two, then you are familiar with loaders. You basically can load in data and it becomes available to that component. So in this loader, we see that we're fetching posts and what I can do is I can use the use loader data hook to get the posts and render the posts in JSX. I really like this mental model because fetching data in a component is a lot easier when you just load it in using the loader. Now, going back to this server function, we see that this is just fetching data, that this is essentially a get request. And we don't have it defined here because by default, a server function is a get request, but you can specify the method to be get here. But what if you want to do a post request with server functions? It's pretty simple. All you have to do is specify the method posts and you would do the same exact thing. You write your function here. In this case, we're taking in an ID, passing it to this endpoint to give us the specific blog post. Doing get requests is easy with Tanstack start. Doing post requests is easy with Tanstack start. You're just going to use a server function. But here's what makes server functions even cooler. You see right before the handler, we see this input validator. Now what this input validator does, it basically checks the type of the data that we're receiving. So we're basically telling it the data that we receive has to be a string. And I can check this. Let me go back to my localhost 3000 and let me click on a specific post. If I look at the console log, I, sh I could see fetching posts with ID four. And that's exactly what's happening here. The data I'm receiving is the ID and the ID is a string. But let's say I change the string to Boolean, right? 
and I hit save. Notice how I get an error right away on post ID. And if I hover over it here, it says string is not assignable to type Boolean. Here is that end to end type safety we were promised. So what I'm gonna do is go back and return this back to string, hit save. If I hover over post ID, I see the type. You can be a lot more aggressive with the validator. I, I for example, can say, if this ID is not a type string, throw in an error. So what I can do here is I can change this to being Boolean. And then if I go and click on a post, notice how I get this error because again, the validator failed. So you can be pretty aggressive with this input validator if you want to. You can also do your auth checks in server functions. You can see here, you can await get current user. And if you don't find the user, you can redirect them back to the login page. Now I will say this as an XJS fanboy, I prefer server actions in tan stack start over Next.js's server actions. Now we talked about routing, server functions. Let's talk about environment functions. So environment functions are different to server functions. How are they different? Well, for starters, server functions are server only logic that can be called anywhere in the application. Meaning you write this function that is in the server, but you can call it on the client. With environment functions, it's different. It allows you to pick where you run the function. So whether you run this code and the client and the server, you get to choose. Now you might be wondering, when does it make sense to run on the server? When does it make sense to run on the client? Let's say you have a function that's creating and deleting files, right? Like you're using the local file system. That's going to be an environment function that runs only on the server. You would use something like create server only function. But let's say you wanted to use the browser API, like window dot or whatever other browser API you choose to use. You're going to use a create client only function. But let's say you wanted to use both. You can use create isomorphic function and then do dot server and define what it should do on the server. And then you can do dot client and define what it should do on the client. And this is particularly cool when hand handling environment variables. You can use create isomorphic functions to basically split what environment variables are available on the client, what environment variables are available on the server. So let's write an isomorphic function, an environment function. I'm basically going to copy this example and you're going to see here in post.tsx, I have a create isomorphic function here and on the server, it's going to return server. And on the client, it's going to return client. Here's what's cool about this. I created a new route called test. I'm using file-based routing, so I have my index.tsx here. And in the route configuration, I can specify if SSR is true or false. So I have SSR as false, and I'm calling my isomorphic function. Can you guess when I console log what should be returned? If I go to my Tanstack start app page, and I inspect and I have console and I refresh, you're going to see client being rendered. Why? Because the way this isomorphic function is written is that if it knows it's being called on the client, then it's going to return client. What if, let's go back to my test route, what if I have SSR as true? And then we hit save. If I refresh my page, I'm going to see server being returned. Here's what you need to understand. Even though SSR is true, if I refresh, you're going to see client being logged too. But we thought this page SSR is true. Here's the thing. See, when we specified server here, this will only run on the server. It will not run on a client. And here, what we have specified as client will never run on the server. We see it running on the client. The reason why I think this is powerful is we have this clear separation between server and client that I think is sometimes blurred with Next.js and can be difficult to navigate, especially if you're a newbie. But honestly, if you want, you could just specify server only function, client only function. Now let's talk about Tanstack's middleware. Now the docs tell us what we can do in the middleware. We can have authentication, authorization, logging. We can have uh, content security policies. We can do observability. We can use it to provide context, error handling. So the middleware in Tanstack Start is very rich and powerful. It's the middleware we're used to in Node.js. Here I have a simple logging middleware. I I'm going to use the create middleware function to create this. I specify this runs on the server. And all I want to do is just comment to log context that I get and get the request headers. Now here's how cool middleware and Tanstack start is. I can run this middleware 
in the server function, but before it the handler runs. So I can have a middleware, you can have an auth middleware, where before someone calls a server function, you make sure they're authenticated, right? This is great security practice. In this case, when I fetch posts, I should see a log, and I'm already seeing the log, but just to test this, I'm going to refresh this page, I'm going to click on a couple posts and you see the request headers being console logged and I get no context here because I don't have any auth or anything that I'm passing. But, and you can chain many of these, right? I can add another middleware if I want to, an auth middleware, a logging middleware, observability, whatever it is, redirection. You can get as creative as you want with your middleware, but the developer experience in my opinion is so easy. You just define it and then you can attach it to whatever server function you want to run that middleware. What's cool is you can run middleware on all the server routes. So let's say you've defined a get request or post request and before someone hits, you wanna log that or you have some sort of authentication, you can specify that middleware in the route for server routes. And last but not least, let's talk about server routes. Server routes allow you to create server-side endpoints in your application that are useful for handling raw HTTP requests. So if you wanna expose API to a third-party service to another app, you just wanna create API routes, you can do that with TanStack Router. You would do that in the route configuration, you would specify in the server, you would have handlers, and you specify the request type, get, post, whatever request type that you want to have. I have a simple example here where we have a get request. This is going to be slash API slash users. And basically what you're going to get is you're going to get uh, a user information. So if I go to localhost slash API slash users and I hit enter, I get information from the API route. And again, just like we talked about in the previous section for middleware, you can have specific middleware here. It's just a test middleware, but I can also log users information. There's so much you can do with all these different building blocks, piecing them together. Tanstack Start is really a great full stack solution. And ladies and gents, that completes the Tanstack Start RC course. Now, this is not production ready. RC means release candidate. So it's very close to 1.0. I believe in release candidate, you don't change, you don't do any breaking changes, but you basically are fixing any bugs or issues that the community is reporting. But I would get started, learn, use it. It definitely feels fresh. I would say this is the one framework I've used where I'm like, huh, I kind of do like this. And this does compare to Next.js. And there are some projects I want to use this for to see if building a full-scale application works and feels right. But so far, ladies and gents, this might be the one. This might be the killer. This might be the top dog. Would love to know your thoughts on Tanstack Start. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comment section. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.